GimKit's new feature, GimKit Creative, gives students and teachers control of building their own game modes in GimKit. These game modes can be built with all kinds of awesome game elements, and they split these into categories including terrain, so the floors and walls of the map that you're building, props, which are the objects and decorations of the game, devices, which are the game mechanics that make the game run, and wires that connect those devices together with other devices or objects. So let's look at how wires can make things work together. Now I'm trapped in this little room. I can't go anywhere, and all I have access to is this button. And I have some objects that I've placed around the room. I'm going to use wires to connect them to this button and perform different behaviors or game mechanics. All right, so I'm going to start by adding a wire. And you notice that any spot that I can connect a wire to, I have a green button hovering over it. I'm going to start with my button and go to my questioner. And then all the behaviors I have uh, available to me pop up. So when the button is pressed, I can make the questioner open the answering, answering screen, close the answering screen, enable the questioner, disable the questioner, or run a wire pulse block. So I'm just going to do open question answering screen. All right, let's test that out. So now I obviously can't get to the questioner, but if I press the button and interact with it, it opens that question up because that's what I used the wire to code the behaviors for. Go ahead and erase that wire. And then let's look at our counter device. So a counter device can track things, a number of things. We'll use a wire to connect the button to the counter and we'll see that when the button is pressed we can make the counter go up we can make the counter go down or we can reset the counter so let's go ahead and make the counter go up so now when i play it and i interact with the button my counter goes up by one and i can keep doing that and the counter will continue to count up There are lots of great reasons that you could use a counter in a game if you want to have players need to get to a certain number of something in order to make the game end or get an item or teleport or whatever you want to make it do. I'll leave that wire there for now. Check out this item grantor. Right, we'll add a wire between the button and the item, grant item grantor. Start here. And we'll go over to that item grantor. And when the button is pressed, we want to grant an item. And now I would need to go into the item grantor itself to decide what that item is. Right now I have it set to a blue key. How much of that item is granted? Um, and there's some other options here, but in terms of the wire connecting the button to the grantor, now when I push that button, I should get a blue key, one blue key. And that was successful. So now I have one blue key. If I wanted to, I could, instead of connecting the button directly to the item grantor, I could connect the counter to the item grantor. So I'll add a wire between the counter and the item grantor. And now I can say, when my target value is reached, I can grant the item. So now it's not a matter of pressing the button once, but pressing the button however many times the counter is looking for. So if I go into the counter, I can set a starting value, and I can go over to target and set a target value. Right now I have it set to five. So now I shouldn't get a blue key until I push the button five times. There's one, two, three, four, five, and I got my blue key. So you can see how that counter can come in handy to kind of control some other behaviors. 
All right, and the last one I'll show you is some text. So I have this text here. You could use this to set up some breakout clues or some escape room style games. Um, I'm going to add a wire between the button and this text. And you can see when the button is pressed, I can show the text, I can hide the text, or I can run that wire pulse block. So I'm going to show the text. And I want to just make sure that I go into my text and make sure that by default, it's not visible when the game starts. So if I hit play, no text down there, but I go up and hit that button and the text appears. So that can be a really handy game mechanic for revealing hidden information when a certain action is completed. So you can see that wires are kind of a handy tool for connecting different things in your game.